Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Dina and it is Monday. It is the 18th of April and I'm here with a couple of big announcements I want to share with you. The first one is I have a finish. I've been working on this one pretty hard for um, prompts in one of the Facebook groups called Animal Adventures and um, I've been sharing that with you as I've gone along. But today, and a little bit last night, I just decided that um, I've done all of the animal adventures I can do this month with this piece. I have to do the last one with my third whip that I have to use in that group because I have to touch each one of them at least once. And so, um, because I had this one with me on vacation, I used it for three of the eight prompts that I was trying to get and I'd already used it. <laughs> so uh, I had used Pandemic in this one and I've got to get over on Enchanted Alphabet and use it for one of them. So that tells you what this is, right? This is Dogwood Lace. This is a beautiful pattern by Rosewood Manor. It was gifted to me by a dear sweet lady uh, at a stitching meetup. Her name is Jennifer. Jennifer, thank you again uh, for such a beautiful stitch. And she gifted me the pattern fabric and the specialty fibers, which were uh, Baked Apple by Weeks.Works. She gave me 10 skeins of it. This is what I have left. I broke into that last one. I was hoping so much that I wouldn't have to. I thought, oh, I'll be able to have a whole skein for something else. But I had to cut one strand, one length off, and I used two of the six, you know, because you do two over two, and that's all I had to do. <laughs> One cut off of it. I tell you what, though, you have to have it. If I'm a very, very frugal um, floss user, and so I am thinking that that may have been why I had a little bit left over. Anyway, I'm going to take just a second and pull my card out that gives me all the details on this one because I'm sure since it's finished you're going to want to know. Um, here it is. Dogwood Lace by Rosewood Manor. Another reason that I had a bit of the floss left over I think is because this is charted for 28 count fabric and I used 32. So um, I think that was good because then that meant the floss went a little bit further. Um, but this is on a 32 count Lugana cream. And um, the only floss that you use is the baked apple. It's a monochromatic piece. But this is my finish. I think it's an absolutely beautiful red sampler. I really do. And I only had to change one thing in it. And that I just talked about in one of my most recent segments in the video that I just uploaded today. And that was to squeeze in the date, uh, the date 2022. And this one, it had 2012, I believe. So I had to change that one to a two and it took a couple of more spaces. So I wound up, I wound up leaving out just uh, one cross on either side of the number that would have been in that little center piece. I'll bring it up as close as I can. So you can see that right there, 2022. So I left out one X on either side of the bottom of that number and it gave me the room that I needed to do it. So that wasn't too hard. But I just think it's so pretty. And to me, it, the pressure of it was that it had to be exact because it's a mirror image. <laughs> and it's going to look funny to your eye if it's not the same. Uh, I, I'm hoping that they're all the same. There may be a mistake in there, but it wasn't, if there is, it's not to the point where it hurts your eyes, you know, where something looks off to you. But I think it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And, you know, we have dogwoods in the south. They're beautiful trees, and they actually bloom in the spring and summer. So what a great time of the year to be finishing this piece. So I am tickled to death to have it done. Um, 
I am very happy that I did the border first. Um, normally, I start in an upper left and just go down and across as I go. But this time, because this border is so intricate, and if you get off with it, you know, all that stitching is messed up. So I decided I was doing the border first, and I made sure it met up. And then it just fit in there beautifully. There were a couple little places where I um, would miscount for a stitch or two, and then very quickly I'd realize I was off because you have so many points to check all around in the border. So fortunately, I never had to frog more than a few stitches um, when I miscounted or did something like that. And your initials, um, they just give you an alphabet, and they, in the pattern, just have a big open spot and say initial here. So you have to figure out by counting how many spots or spaces are used for your initials, where to place yours. So I made the decision when I did my first one that I would just count off of this point and start my initial and I did the same over here. And that way I didn't crowd in on what I was gonna be stitching over here. So I had plenty of room there. So I put my DH in there. So I love it. I think it's beautiful and I am so excited to share it with you. I'm so happy to have it done. Now I'm gonna go look in my stash of frames and see if I have a frame that will it will fit and work well with. And if I do, I'm gonna frame this little pretty piece and put it out. If I don't, I'll be going to look for a frame. But it's a perfect square. I'm pretty sure. So I think that'll be a really pretty one to frame. Anyway, I'm pretty excited about it. I had to share it with you right away. <laughs> so that's my first big announcement. Here is my second. I have been invited by Cindy of Cindy's Cross Stitch to participate in her um, Christmas ornament exchange for July Christmas in July. And I think it's a wonderful idea and I love the way she's gonna do it. I've heard a couple of floss tubers already mention it that are gonna be doing it. And so I just wanna throw my hat in the ring as well and encourage you to give it a look. I will put her information in the box below, in the description box, um, so that you can uh, go and get all the details from her directly. But I'll try to do a good job sharing it with you here as well. Um, Cindy wanted to do something in response to a request that she was, was getting from her viewers about could we do something fun that we could share and do together without it being a retreat. Um, Cindy's trying to help us to enjoy our community without it costing us money for the retreat or travel. Um, and also so that more people can get in because there are a lot of times the space is limited when you get to looking at a retreat and you can't always get in. So I think it's a great idea. I know a lot of us like to do some Christmas stitching in July. So Christmas uh, in July is not a new term, but this is a great way to celebrate it. You just pick an ornament that you want to stitch and fully finish. Um, if you're not great at finishing, then pick something easy to finish, you know, make it a flat flat finish. Um, Cindy has tutorials and she, she talks about them in her video and gives you a reference to uh, how to find those where you could just follow along and um, follow her finishing techniques. You know Vonna Pfeiffer has finishing techniques and Helen D does a lot of finishing as well and does tutorials. So any of those guys, um, you know, Elizabeth Can Stitch does tutorials. So just look at some of these floss tubers who enjoy sharing their finishing um, and just copy what they do. They give you great instructions. Um, so I'm encouraging you to think about it. I am about to go and pull out my Christmas patterns and pick an ornament that I'm going to stitch. And here's the thing. You stitch it and finish it. And you don't have to worry about, oh, you know, where's my person? Where do they live? What do they like? We're just gonna send it to Cindy. And we're gonna send her $8. So, and I checked with her. She takes PayPal and uh, she'll take a check or cash, whatever you wanna do. 
Um, I'm going to PayPal her myself. I think that's the safest for her and for me. Um, but you just send her $8. And the $8 pays for your packaging and the postage to mail out your ornament. So what Cindy's going to provide for us is, one, she's going to videotape all of the ornaments so that we get to see them all. Normally in an exchange, you only see the one you make and the one that you give unless someone happens to share it on their Blastube channel. This way, Cindy's going to film them all and we get to see everything that got created and then she's also going to make sure that whoever sends her an ornament gets an ornament. I know some of you have been in exchanges that it doesn't always happen. Someone either falls on a difficult life situation and they can't finish it, or um, you know, you've sent yours in to your partner and somehow yours gets lost in the mail, or there's all kinds of things that happen. But you can be disappointed. You can get your feelings hurt. So I think Cindy's trying to do everything she can to make sure that we all have an enjoyable experience. And I think that's awesome. I think it's great fun. So I'm going to start looking today. I'm going to pick my Christmas ornament. I'm going to stitch it up, finish it up, and I'm going to send it to Cindy. We have to have it to her. I believe it's by the 15th of July. But she'll give you that information in her video as well. And that way... She can package them all up and send them all out in plenty of time for us to have them uh, for Christmas because she is planning on getting them to us by the end of July. So I think that'll be great fun. I can't wait to show you what I um, stitch. I am going to film it and then I won't share it until she does her video and shares them all and then I'll share mine. Um, and then when I get mine, I'll share which one I got. So I'm excited about that. I do know that Marlene, Stitching by the Lake, has already uh, advertised on her Floss 2 video that she's participating. So you know that ornament's going to be beautiful. Um, I hope you'll join us. It, it's not going to cost you anything to join. You don't have to travel. You don't have to leave home. Um, all it's going to cost you is a little bit of postage. I think that's a great way to enjoy sharing with another stitcher something that you have lovingly stitched and made um, and that you will get something just as lovely. So come join us. I hope you will. All right, those are my two big announcements for the day. Uh, don't forget to look down in the uh, description box below and see where Cindy's video is, where she talks all about it and uh, you can get uh, another round of information on it so you make sure you have everything you need and if you have any questions please feel free to send her a message um, on her on that channel uh, on that video because you know she'll be happy to, to explain anything that you that you want to know um, and in the meantime happy stitching everybody Hi everyone, this is Dina. Welcome to my channel. Today is Tuesday, the 19th of April, and I'm here to give you a little bit of a stitching report. I was um, excited about my finish yesterday, and I've shared that with you, but it left me in that um, immediately following a finish uh, place where you feel like you either need a rest or a palate cleanser or something a little different. And I had a Zoom stitching session last night, so I had to come up with something to stitch while we talked and visited. So I thought, well, I'll go look at my little basket of kitted up projects that I have put together that correspond to my WhipGo board. Back here. So I ran to the basket and I looked and I saw one of my new starts that's on my WhipGo board that the goal is to finish it. And I pulled it out. And it is called Dog Hair. It's by my Big Toe Designs. And it just simply says, you know, dog hair, just another specialty fiber. And then it has uh, dog buttons on it. There's only two colors in it. So I pulled, I had kitted it with fabric and I had two pieces to choose from. One was um, Antique Ivory, a 28 count Cashel, this one. 
And the other one is the one I chose to use because it was a little bit lighter and I felt like everything would show up even more so on it. I was afraid the paw prints wouldn't show up on the other one when I pulled fibers. So here is my dog hair complete with buttons. Isn't this precious? <laughs> this is a mystery linen. It's a 28 count linen. It's some sort of antique ivory or something um, because it's just that really pretty neutral. Uh, but it was light enough that those little paw prints that were stitched in DMC 610 showed up beautifully. And I guess you could tell that by looking at them when I pulled that fiber, I was afraid they would not show up on this. They're too close. So that's what made me decide on this piece right here. I had these buttons in my stash. Uh, my husband had drilled little tiny, tiny holes in them so that I could stitch them onto a piece. I had a, got them in a bag of buttons at Joann's and I had used one for a previous finish. And, but he went ahead and put holes in all of them while he had his little tiny drill bit in his drill. So today, or when I put these buttons on this morning, I just ran into my button stash and I got out five puppy dog buttons that I had left and I picked the four that I liked the best and I put them on this piece. None of them, of course, are cocoa, although this little, maybe Frishon Bijou or something, is the closest to her. But anyway, it doesn't matter because it's about all dog hair for all of us. So I have this ready. I'm going to take it with me now to um, Hobby Lobby or uh, because they have photograph um, frames there and I measured this one and I know sometimes they'll have an 8 by 8 square frame and this will fit perfectly in an 8 by 8 So I'm taking it to see if I can grab a picture frame to put it in. I'm also going to take with me my recent finishes to see if I can get some off-the-shelf frames to put them in or if I have to have them custom framed and if I have to have them custom framed I'll leave one or two there I won't put them all in it'll be too much at one time but um, I'm hoping that I will be able uh, to find some pre-finished picture frames that some of these will fit in so I'm excited about that but that is my update for today I have um, one more meeting today. <laughs> I've had a phone call this morning with my sister Stephanie that was wonderful. It was great to catch up because we didn't talk while I was at the beach and uh, we had two weeks you know, of, of news to catch up on. And then I went with my husband today for a follow-up appointment. I don't know if I've said much about it, but he was not feeling well for a while. I think I've mentioned that. And it turned out he was quite anemic. Um, not sure why but he has been taking uh, iron tablets and he's been eating iron rich foods. We've been trying to make sure he had high iron in every meal and it certainly worked because today his iron is way over the top and now they're telling him stop, stop taking the pills, go easy on the food, you know, that's iron rich um, and let's let it normal out. And so we'll follow up with him um, probably do another lab work in about six months. But the good news is he's no longer anemic and that's very important because he is going on a big hike coming up soon and he wanted to make sure he was healthy and ready to go do that. So I am thrilled about that. And I'm gonna leave here now and go to Hobby Lobby on my way to church because we are interviewing a young uh, person for a director of our children's um, department at church and I'm on that committee and so we have uh, you know a person to meet and talk with today which I'm thrilled about and I'm hoping I can hit my Hobby Lobby run on the way because uh, it is on the way uh, to where I need to be and then um, I'll come home and take care of dinner and uh, do some other things uh, here at the house so it's been a great day I'm really glad I got my finish this morning because chances are I won't get to stitch the rest of the day. Um, and that's okay, since I got some time this morning. But I hope you are having as much time as you like to stitch, and I hope that you are getting um, great joy out of what you're stitching. So until we can talk again, and I have something else to share with you, happy stitching.
Hello everyone, welcome back. Today is Wednesday. It is the 20th of April and I am here with just a little bit of a planning session. I was looking toward the end of the month to see what other prompts I had to hit, what plans I might want to do this month. I've had a great month of finishes. I've, I've had um, four, I think, so far this month. And a couple of them were unexpected. I wasn't expecting uh, to finish my Dogwood Lace when I did, or my Thankful Quaker. But when I counted up my whips, I realized I had only eight active whips. And that's great, that's what I used to do when I was just beginning to do more than one whip at a time. And it sort of brought back some memories about that. But I decided I would look ahead and go ahead and explore possibilities of what I might wanna do in the month of May, June, and July this year. May has always been a mixed bag for me. There have been times when I have participated in a bunch of starts in May. There's been times when I've worked on whips and starts, mostly that, um, because that's more how I like to stitch. So I decided this May would be no different. I actually have goals that I have set for four pieces in May and um, I want to, to make some progress on them. So that means I have to be able to work on whips. But it is the month when everyone um, kind of considers whether or not they're gonna do a bunch of new starts. And I decided I would like to have a few and I've whittled my whips down to eight. So that would be great. I could, I could stand a few and I might, might need to have a few more things to work on. So I decided that since May is the fifth month of the year, I would like to do five starts. And since there are five Mondays this year in the month of May, I'll have it a start every Monday. So I'm going to call it Monday, uh, May Monday starts. So May Mondays are new starts, or I'm planning on that anyway. So here's my first one. I went to a retreat recently um, with my friend Donna. This was actually two retreats ago now. And the project that we were um, given by Julie McConnell was a design that she did herself exclusively for the retreat. And it's called Stitching Needfuls. And that was the theme of our retreat. And you may recall me sharing this with you when I got back, if you've been watching for a little while. This goes on the top of a box that she provided for us. So I already have the finishing for this. I just need to stitch it. So this will be one of my new starts in the month of May, one of my Monday starts. It comes with its own project bag and it's fully kitted with fabric and floss. So I'm ready to go. This will be one of my Monday starts in the month of May. Next will be a start that I pulled out of my stash because I just fell in love with it. It's called um, Autumn in the Country. It's by Just Nan. Try to knock the beads down so that you can see the actual pattern. But isn't that beautiful? Since I just finished my Thankful Quaker, I decided it was time to start on another autumn piece. Um, even though I have the Autumn Bell Pool going, I still think this one was just so pretty. And I didn't have the called for fabric, which was a raw Belfast linen, but I have a lakeside linen that I want to try, and it is called Vintage Exemplar. I've heard a lot about this one from Nicole Needlework, and this is a 36 count. 36 count, we're gonna try it, we'll see. Anyway, isn't that beautiful? I think that is going to be a beautiful pattern on that fabric. I will, of course, check the floss and make sure I don't have to change anything out because this is a little bit more of a tan brown and this is more of an orange brown. But I just think those colors are going to be beautiful on that. And I have it in my fall bag that I made myself. So that will be another May Monday start. 
Now, this one is gonna be a gift. So I put it in the bag that was a gift and it's all patchwork because it reminds me of this project because the project is all patchwork. Um, it's called Snow, Flo Snow Folks at Home and it's gonna be a gift. And this is the biggest picture I have of it so I'm gonna try to get that close for you. Notice it's a snowman but it's dressed like a clown. My sister Stephanie's mother, Ellen, uh, my adopted mom, <laughs> she collects snowmen and she collects clowns. I've stitched her both. Here's one where it's combined. Stephanie, tell me what you think. But my plan, unless Stephanie tells me differently that she doesn't think her mother would like this one, my plan is to stitch that for Ellen. And if I get it done in time for this Christmas, if I don't, it'll be next Christmas. But this is the fabric. This is on just a, an off-white uh, fabric, but I had a remnant in my stash that was fairly large, and it's a picture of this plus Tycho, Tycho, T-Y-C-H-O, 32 count. And look at that. I think that's gonna be beautiful for that little snowman. And I've got a big enough piece, of course, for him to fit on there without any worries. So that is what I have paired for this little snowman. And let's see if he has a name for the pattern. Mr. Mittens. <laughs> Cute, there's Mr. Mittens right there. So that's going to be one of my May Monday starts and it'll hopefully be a gift for Ellen. So, have that ready. Now, this pattern I've been wanting to start for a while. I've had it kitted because it was gifted to me. Um, one was gifted to me by my sister Stephanie and one was gifted to me by my friend Marissa. But they're a pair. And so I'll need to get started on at least one of them. And the pair are Royal Games 1 and 2. Isn't that gorgeous? And you know, I love to play cards. I love to play canasta. I play hearts. I've been known to play spades and a few other things, but canasta is my love. So I think uh, as a nod to that, I will start one of these. And in fact, help me out. Vote on which one you want. This is Royal Games 1 with the heart and the spade. And this is Royal Games 2 with the diamond and the club. I don't mind which one I start. So why don't you vote for me? Tell me which one you want. Royal Games 1, heart and spades. You can say any of those three things. Games 1, heart or spades. And then this one is Royal Games 2 or you can say diamond or club. And I am stitching these on what's left of my fabric that I repurposed. It's from a project that I gave up on for still Christmas. But I think those little ladies are gonna be absolutely gorgeous on this one. It's a silk weaver fabric. Isn't that beautiful? It's pixie dust. And I am gonna put one each on these two pieces of fabric. I had enough to cut these apart for this project and not have to frog out anything in order to reuse it. So that was the deal. So this is fully kitted and ready to go. So let me know which one you'd like to see me start first on my May Monday. So that's four, that's the first four weeks. I don't have them in any orders, just that's what I'm gonna do. But this last one, I'm gonna have to ask my sister Stephanie to look away because she'll see this later in life and I want it to be a surprise. Notice the hint there. So this is what I plan to do for my fifth start. And it is uh, Paulette Stewart from Plum Street Samplers. And I think it will be precious. And the fabric that I've chosen for it um, is one of my favorites. It's just 
Platinum Zweigart, 32 count. And I think it'll just be great on that. So I have to fully kit these um, that aren't fully kitted. Like this, I need to pull threads. And I think there's one other one I need to pull threads. But I'll be doing that soon. And this is what I'm hoping to do in the month of May. My Monday, May Monday starts. I'm going to invite any of you that want to to join me. I think that's a great way to participate in a multiple start month uh, when a lot of people are doing that. Uh, you may not want to do five. You might want to do um, one or two, just whatever you like. I chose five, as I said, because it's the fifth month of the year. And um, I actually wrote out a list of five different ideas I had for the month of May. Um, and I'm not gonna share all of them with you because I'm probably gonna adapt them for other months later in the year. So I can tell you I have planned something special for the month of June, and I have planned something really special for the month of July, for Christmas in July. So before May gets here, I have to get busy because I need to do my Christmas in July ornament for Cindy's exchange, and then I will be ready to start this in the month of May. Now, th that is, of course, in addition to doing whip go, because, you know, I'm really committed to my whip go, and uh, I will be doing that as well. But I'm down to eight things to work on, and a lot of them are big. So I thought I would really appreciate getting a few more things going uh, so I'd have a little more, you know, to work on. Thanks for letting me share my plans with you. I hope you're having a great stitching day. I'm helping my husband get ready for his camping uh, trip today. I have already helped him by hemming a uh, vinyl uh, footprint that goes under his tent to, as a moisture barrier and um, to protect the bottom of his tent. And now he's let me know he has another uh, piece of vinyl he needs me to hem. So I'll be going to do that in a minute. Um, but. You know, today is all things hiking. <laughs> so I just wanted to take a moment, share my plans with you, tell you happy stitching. I'll see you next time. Hi everyone, welcome back. My name is Dina and this is my channel about cross stitch. And it is the 22nd of April. It is a Friday. So I'm here to give you a bit of an update and tell you, I guess, a little bit of a progress report. So I was working today on a prompt and this prompt was for two acrostics <laughs> and I needed to do at least 300 stitches in it to meet the requirement of one of the acrostics. So I pulled out my autumn bell pull. I'm gonna tilt the, the pamphlet so you can see it the way that you would normally read it. And the last time you saw it, I had completed this U. So today, I went ahead and got started on the letter T. And as I said, I had to stitch at least 300 stitches in it. So I did that. And fortunately, I, I decided I wanted to do at least 300 stitches in it, but I wanted to do the top of the T and have that completely done as my little goal. Well, I did that and it was 377 stitches. So here you go, there's the top of my T. It's all ready to go. Someone had asked the question about how I'm spacing these, so I will let you know that from the lowest point of the picture above it, which would, is in this case is the leaf, then it is six cross stitches until the top row of the next one. So there are six spaces in here um, from the bottom to the top. So I'm doing that between each, and that is actually called for in the pattern. So I didn't figure that out myself. It came that way, but here we are. So I had to roll it up today on my little roller frame and uh, get it up where I could start working on that T. So I'm pretty excited about the fact that I got my little goal done today and I finished my 24 hours of cross stitch across stick which is what fuels you, and the A in what uh, was for Autumn Bell Pull, and that was my final letter for that acrostic. 
The other cross stick I'm working on is the one, um, I, I think the person who pretty much um, administers these um, cross sticks and challenges that I talk about the most is Carrie Pickering. She's from England. Um, or Wales, and she uh, she's the one who authors most of these challenges. It is a private group, and I'm sorry for that because I can't encourage you to go and join because it's a closed group, but um, I enjoy sharing all of my uh, prompts with you, and if, if you hear them and want to follow them, of course, you can do that on your own. Uh, so just to give you an idea now, I've got my spreadsheet out that I've been tracking all this on, and I was counting, putting my stitches down here just so I could make sure I met all the minimums. And then I had to actually go to a second page this month. Uh, and so one of my um, acrostics here is in that private group, but it was the Easter time was the acrostic. It's for the month of April. And so on that one, the A was in Easter and I hit that. So I am now down to the very last prompt for Easter time, and Easter time has an I in it, for in the word time, and I had um, decided to do that one for inlet or island, because both of those items are in my By the Bay project that I'm about to start. So I can't finish that acrostic until I start it, and so I was talking to my friend Donna last night, because she and I want to start a By the Bay together, and we are stitching two different by the bay combinations. She's doing a much bigger one than I am. But she is coming over to see me on the weekend of the 29th of this month. So while she's here at my house visiting, we've agreed to start our by the bays. So I will have to wait to the very end of the month <laughs> to finish that one, um, which means otherwise, I finished all my prompts for the month. Um, so that means I have the rest of the month until my friend and I start by the bays to stitch on whatever I want. Not for a prompt, just because I want to. So if I look back at WIPGO, <laughs> which is one of my projects I'm doing, um, there's only one piece in WIPCO that I have not met my goal that's been called. So that is nativity. So I think I'm gonna pull that out and I'm gonna get started on it. I've got to work on that angel. So I'm gonna show you, pardon my reach, I've got it out already over here. This is where I got to the last time I worked on it. And I got this side almost to the page break. There's a couple of colors in here that I need to finish on that side of the wing. And then, of course, backstitch. Haven't backstitched anything. Um, but I am going to work on this, and I think I'm going to try to finish this to the page break, and then I'm going to try to come over here and, and start on this side and see how that goes. Um, I was talking with my friend Glo this morning. Hi, Glo, if you're watching. Um, she and I were just comparing some notes on what we were working on and what we're stitching and some new starts that we're planning. And um, I mentioned to Glow that I had come up with some plans uh, that I shared with you in a, just a prior segment about May, my five starts in May, one every Monday. And Glow is gonna join me on that and she's gonna start something every Monday for the month of May as well. I can't wait to see what she picks. Uh, she was going through today and to start looking to see what she might want to do. So if you're interested in joining that with me, I would love it and I'd love to see what you are gonna be working on. So um, let me know and write me a comment and let me know. And if I have enough people who are interested in doing that, we'll create a hashtag or something so we can all post it out there. But um, anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you. I was pretty excited that Glow wanted to do that too. Well, that is my update for today. I'm gonna let you get back to what you were doing and I'm gonna go and get up my By the Bay. Happy stitching, everybody. Hi everyone, welcome back. 
This is Tina. It is Saturday, April the 23rd, and I am here to uh, tell you how my uh, marathon is going, 24 hours of cross stitch. It's gotten off to a little bit of a slow start, but I started out last evening about five o'clock, um, starting for the 24 hours, and I worked on my um, nativity. And in case you've seen it, as I've been stitching it, you'll notice I finished filling in the rest of that wing all the way down to the page break. And so the next time I stitch on it, I'll either come over here and bring that one down as well, or I'll go ahead and finish this side by looking at the next page. I'll have to decide by looking at the pattern. But I think it's um, quite pretty. I'm excited about it, and I was tickled to death to get that. That only took me a couple of hours to do. I didn't have that much left on it. So that was last night's stitching. My husband was packing uh, frantically last night, getting ready to go on his big hike. And so I had to do a little bit of um, dog sitting and keeping Coco occupied while he did that. So this morning we got up bright and early. I took him to our martyr station, um, not too far away, about an hour away, uh, 50 minutes, I think. But then I had to drive back. <laughs> so I didn't get to start stitching until much later this morning than I had hoped to. I also had to walk Coco when I got home. It was that time of day when she likes to get out and stretch her legs. So, I just got started stitching again, but I wanted to share with you what I'm gonna be working on, and then I'll come back and tell you what hours I got to do. Um, I'm gonna have a new start. These are beautiful little stockings. They are small. They're Christmas ornament size. And I'm going to be working. I've started this one. I've just done part of the top up here this morning so far. And I kitted it up this morning. And I need four different colors of DMC. I've either got them in projects or I've run out of them. And I'm going to go pick those up this afternoon. My friend Donna and I are thinking that we may go over to Hobby Lobby this evening and then have supper here. So, um... Anyway, I'm waiting for her to go get these colors. So I'm trying to stitch uh, um, further down so that I can, you know, get some things done on the stocking. This is in a Treasured Memories book, a Cross Stitch Christmas Treasured Memories. Um, it was apparently a Craftways publication. This is what it looks like. I picked this up at a... Um, retreat or something you know it was it was on the freebie table believe it or not I didn't have this one but there are several things in here that I am going to stitch so I've got little tabs already on them but that's what I'm starting right now I have a goal if I can make it happen to stitch this entire stocking because I am participating in the ornament exchange and I, I, there are two of these I, I'm trying to pick which one I want to do. So I think I'm going to try to stitch them both and then see which one I like um, that I would like to exchange. So that's what I'd like to do today. Um, we'll see how that goes. And um, now that I've got Coco situated, I've had lunch. Um, I think I should be able to stitch all afternoon. So hopefully I can come back in a few hours and let you see my progress. Happy 24 Hours of Cross Stitch Marathon, everybody.